Local 4 News begins right now with a breaking news alert. Good afternoon. We start with breaking news from Monroe County, where Sky 4 is over the scene of a very serious accident. It happened on North Telegraph at Hess Road. Traffic is closed in both directions. Now you can see a van ended up on its side. We are being told one person is dead, one person is in critical condition, and there were seven people in that van. Police say the driver was heading eastbound on Hess, trying to get into Telegraph when a truck hit the van on the passenger side. Right now, Sky 4 is over the scene. This is a live picture. As we have, uh, as we have told you, the situation is developing right now. The investigation just starting at this hour. Avoid the area. We do have a crew on the way, and we'll bring you updates throughout the evening as well as on clickondetroit.com. Well, here you can see Detroit history going up in flames. This fire stirring up so many memories for so many people. Flames ripping through the old Boblo Island boat just a few hours ago. Now, if you grew up here, you might remember the boat as it was in the photo on the left of your screen. These days, it wasn't what it used to be, but many are still so disappointed to see these burnt remains. Let's go live to Sean Lay, who is tracking the investigation into what happened. Sean. Let's get to the very latest here on Local 4. Just got off the phone with Detroit Fire Arson investigators, and they say the Boblo boat caught fire today because of a welding accident. That is what they are leaning towards. A man doing work, welding work right there on the Boblo. An accident occurred. 911 was called by a security guard. In fact, that welder so upset about the fire, he kept trying to get back on the Bobolo boat to put that fire out himself. Fire crews had to keep him back. But take a look at this. A surreal scene here. Bobolo boat is, uh, is destroyed, as you can see it here, and a Detroit fire boat continues to just pour massive amounts of water here. Plenty of people showing up here with memories that are truly going up in flames. It was 1130 this morning when local four broke the news that then broke hearts all around our Metro Detroit region. The Boblo boat, the SS St. Clair was on fire and as people watched live from Sky four person after person shared the same observation. Didn't the fire crew on scene with one hose need more help? Where was the Detroit Fire Department fire boat? And why was it taking so long to get here? I wouldn't say a normal response, uh, but the fire boat uh, was notified. Uh, they headed here as urgently as possible. And uh, there were no civilians on the, uh, the boat. No one's injured, no firefighters injured, no police officers injured. Uh, they're here and the boat uh, has been, the fire has been suppressed. Fire crews on scene telling Local 4 that they knew that welding was taking place on the boat as that boat is being restored. One man told us he was working on the boat when the fire broke out, but as it burned, he was too distraught to even talk about what happened. Could the Bobolo boat have been saved? Detroit Firefighters Union head says another fire boat is needed. The current fire boat is not staffed 24 7. The fire boat should be manned 24 7, 365 with a firefighting crew. We need a couple of boats there. All right, back here live again, a welding accident on the boat, according to Detroit Fire Investigators, is the cause of this. But so much more to bring you coming up at 5 o'clock. Two doctors bought this boat. They tell me they were so close to getting it done for a full restoration and inviting the public to make new memories on this boat. Their conversation with me, Karen, coming up at 5 o'clock, clearly they're crushed. Oh, of course, such, such a sad scene there this afternoon. Thank you, Sean. We did post many Boblo memories online at clickondetroit.com. You can find many stories we've done over the years. Just look on the homepage for a trip down memory lane. We're also following a big fire cleanup in Wyandotte, a fire that started yesterday, took crews nearly 17 hours to completely control. Three apartments and an old portrait studio are gone after a fire destroyed the building. It started about 4 o'clock in the afternoon yesterday and then burned throughout the night, rekindling at least once. A police chief says the fire was being fueled by items that were being stored inside the studio. Portrait studio on the first floor that hadn't been used as a portrait studio in years, and then it just accumulated stuff and more stuff and more stuff. So there was quite a fire load on that first floor. The fire department did call the Red Cross to help those affected get a temporary place to stay. 
All right, so can you feel the difference outside? Oh, <laughs> finally that heat wave moved out of the Metro Detroit area. So let's check in with Andrew Humphrey in for Ben today with a beautiful forecast. Karen, beautiful is exactly right. We have wonderful conditions out there. 80 degrees over at Metro Airport, and Karen is also right. All that sticky humidity now gone. Even cooler in a lot of places. Looking to our north with winds generally coming out of the east, blowing off those cooler lakes. Only 68 right now for our friends over in Port Huron. Haven't seen this in a while. The heat index or the feels like temperature, the same or even lower than the actual temperature. Blue skies overhead, people with uh, out with uh, their gear out there on the water as well, with 80 degrees over at Metro Airport. Now it continues to be warm right now and mild as we go into the evening hours, with temperatures here in the city falling into the mid 70s by dinner time. But it gets cooler tonight. We'll talk about that and that all important weekend forecast coming up. All right, thank you, Andrew. If there were any doubts about how dangerous it will be to rescue the soccer team from a flooded cave, it's now become crystal clear. A former Navy SEAL died during the rescue efforts overnight. Kimberly Gill is in the newsroom with more on what happened and where things stand now, Kim. Yeah, that Navy diver was working to bring oxygen into the cave when he died, and it really underscores how difficult it will be to bring the boys who are younger and inexperienced through the flooded caves to safety. While rescue crews are pumping water out of the cave, conditions are still very dangerous with fast flowing water and narrow passages. Uh, we're told the diver who died didn't have enough oxygen of his own, and he collapsed on his way out. Rescue crews are trying to train the boys to swim out, but that could be a tricky mission. Meanwhile, this is exclusive video from CNN. It shows some of the rescue crews searching for possible openings in the hillside. They're working for another way to get the boys out of the cave where they might be able to avoid the water altogether. Authorities hope to get the boys out as soon as possible, of course, as heavy rain could hit tomorrow, adding to the water in those caves. It seems we're reaching a critical time in this operation for sure. And by the way, we told you yesterday the trap soccer team, they wanted updates on the World Cup. Well, the president of FIFA heard about that and has invited the boys to the World Cup finals in Russia if they're able to make it out in time. The final game is July 15th. So if anything, Karen, that should give the boys a good reason to keep fighting. Um, and of course, we'll keep you posted on every step of the way as this story goes, as we have been all along. Karen? Such a heartbreaking story. All right. Thank you, Kim. We appreciate that. Well, new shots have been fired in President Trump's growing trade war with China. At midnight Eastern time, the United States slapped a 25% tax on $34 billion worth of Chinese imports. China is retaliating with taxes on an equal amount of U.S. products, including soybeans, pork, and electric cars. China's Commerce Ministry said Washington has, quote, ignited the biggest trade war in economic history. Here at home, a local hero is getting a special honor on Belle Isle. You may not recognize Ed Deeb's name right away, but he played a huge role in creating Metro Detroit Youth Day. We take you there every year. Deeb has spent 50 years bridging the gap between the city's business leaders and the next generation. Paula Tutman shows you how he's being paid back for paying it forward. So most of us use street signs to get to where we're going, right? But today, for one particular man, the street sign is about where he's been and where he's taken all of us with him. <laughs> You're doing fine. You're doing great. For Ed Deeb, it's been a lifetime filled with business. Not only is the founder of the Michigan Food and Beverage Association and a great benefactor of the city of Detroit, before it was popular to be so, he told all of Detroit that young people should be honored, they should be revered, and they should be appreciated. And above all, they should have fun. Got him, you got him. With his annual Metro Youth Day, he gathered young people from around the area to come out, meet, and find common cause on Belle Isle. Sometimes kids don't really get to go out and enjoy themselves, or there's not really a lot of resources in Detroit where you could go and have fun. And that just was really a really nice experience for me. Little known factoid, unless you attend Cast Tech, you probably don't know, he is such a big deal, he's even part of the civics curriculum. They talked about him in school. Today, the plan was to surprise Ed Deeb by naming a street after him on Belle Isle. He's so very well deserved. Yep. But in Ed Deeb fashion, there are no secrets from the man who seems to know almost everything about the city. I was surprised until two days ago. But it's still an honor. I said, you're kidding me. You know, I was very surprised. But I'm happy. <laughs> you know, it's a great, great honor. 
to have a street named at Belle Isle after my brother, Edward D. I just have one regret. I wish my mother could be here to see it and my father, but I know they're up there watching. And in his own way, he's made it even easier to answer very complex life questions like, you know, how does one live a life of purpose and find admiration in deeds done? What is the true path to success in a way that people think highly enough to speak well of you while you're still here? How do you find your way into the history and the fabric of a still great city? The direction oh now God. is easy. Just go the Ed Deeb route. One, two, two three. three. Hooray. Paula Tutman, Local 4. What a class act. The annual Metro Detroit Youth Day is July 11 this year, and it will be held on the athletic field on Ed Deeb Avenue. Still ahead, first at four, deadly Takata airbags lead to another recall of more than a quarter million cars. We'll tell you what you need to know. Plus, we have this from Help Me Hank. I'm consumer investigator Hank Winchester. Amazon Prime Day is coming soon. I'll have your guide to saving big money and shopping smarter next. All right, Hank, up first, you're looking at a new mug shot for singer Chris Brown. He was arrested moments after a concert. We'll tell you about those charges against him next. Meantime, we are following this breaking news out of French Township. French Town Township, I should say. One person is dead. Another is in critical condition after an accident on North Telegraph and Hess Road. According to police, the van, which had seven people in it, was turning onto Telegraph when it was hit by a truck. The driver of the truck, uninjured. Both directions of Telegraph Road closed right now. Stay here for another update later in this half hour. We'll be right back.